space has been rather crowded recently. In June, China's Shenzhou 12 manned spacecraft sent three Taikonauts into space. Three, two, one, ignition. In July, Britain's Virgin Galactic sent its founder to join the party. To the next generation of dreamers, if we can do this, just imagine what you can do. Hey! Nine days later, American billionaire Jeff Bezos enjoyed the view of Earth for the first time. And most recently, the first all-civilian crew soared into orbit aboard the SpaceX rocket ship. SpaceX launched the world's first all-civilian crew spacecraft into Earth's orbit on Wednesday. All of a sudden, the galaxy of stars is no longer far away. But does it mean space travel for everyone is around the corner? Or another battlefield for some countries? People like Bezos have shown the world that after a short period of training, non-professional astronauts can successfully finish the flight. The SpaceX crew only spent five months learning everything. Virgin Galactic's pre-flight training only takes five days. And for Bezos' Blue Origin crew, it was 14 hours. Shocking, right? The greatly reduced training time is still sufficient to complete the flight. This makes it possible to conduct large-scale pre-flight training and enable the general public to step into space. However, don't forget, even if you are capable of flying to space, the tickets are prohibitively expensive. In the 2018 survey, one of the top two reasons given by 58% of Americans who said they would not want to board a spacecraft was that space travel would be too scary. As private commercial companies have emerged, the safety issue has become more complicated. Last December, at the last minute of launching a Starship prototype, SpaceX ignored at least two warnings from the Federal Aviation Administration. After Virgin Galactic's manned spaceflight in July, the FAA suspended the next flight because a warning light came on due to the vehicle going off the trajectory. When training programs are simplified and non-specialists fly, how regulation can ensure the safety of commercial space flights is of paramount importance. Any accident would be an irreversible tragedy and a huge blow to the space industry. You know, I think you, do, you just have to go into it with your eyes open and you have to do you know, everything you can to try to avoid those disasters. You know, NASA lose 3% of all the, all, the, all the people they put into space. A private program can't afford to lose anybody. For you and me, there's still a long way to go before we can view the Earth from space. But for some countries, space has long been a battlefield. About two years ago, former U.S. President Donald Trump officially created the U.S. Space Force, the first new U.S. military service in more than 70 years. Because space is the world's newest warfighting domain. Amid grave threats to our national security, American superiority in space is absolutely vital. And we're leading, but we're not leading by enough, but very shortly we'll be leading by a lot. This aggressive statement is clearly a reflection of America's future direction. And as more and more people can be sent into space more frequently, it may lead to a brand new picture for aggressive countries like the US. For them, the future space might not be just a long-range strategic arena, but also a face-to-face -face battlefield for human beings. However, please don't forget that space is now full of cooperation. And it should be. Space has so many possibilities, but it shouldn't be a continuation of the animosity. As human beings go step by step into space, let's greet the stars embracing us with a gift of unity and friendship. In this way, the stars will surely give us plenty in return. This is Factile. Thank you for watching. I'm Xiaoxian, and I will see you next time.